As most of you know, I'm pretty much a guru on this uh, infotainment stuff that's linked with the fibre optic cables, and uh, makes a circuit for all of the uh, uh, various ECUs. Here's a selection of the, the usual suspects that are fitted across the Land Rover range. This is the uh, uh, rear seat entertainment unit. This is a television tuner unit. We have here a Highline amplifier, or you can have the uh, premium uh, uh, seven, uh, uh, Logic 7 amplifier. We've also got a TMC module. This is the later uh, Bluetooth phone module module and the earlier Nokia Bluetooth phone module. Also as part of the infotainment units they do do a six disc changer however this is only fitted in the full Range Rover. It's fitted with this particular screen and of course with a fiber optic loop it connects through to this unit. This is the integrated head unit mounted in a, a bracket on the bulkhead of the vehicle and this makes the gateway between the infotainment circuit and the rest of the vehicle's electronics. This little unit was only fitted in 2005 and actually formed a gateway between the integrated head unit and the remainder of the BMW electronics. After then they just have the integrated head unit which communicates directly with all the CAN bus electronics. Of course a part of the job of the, uh, the screen is to provide satellite navigation and in order to do this they have to fit in the boot of the car a computer unit with a DVD drive drive uh, in that takes the maps in the form of uh, a DVD that's loaded onto them. This unit is also used in the Discovery 3 and Range Rover Sport fitted underneath the passenger seat in which turn time it's connected to this unit which is the screen that's fitted in Discovery 3 Range Rover Sport. Again part of the infotainment uh, loop of fibre optics and again connected to an integrated head unit. However in this case the integrated head unit is mounted on top of a six disc changer mechanism but it is exactly the same integrated head unit as used in the full Range Rover just has the front panel on this particular one. After 2009 when we went to the 2010 model they changed things a little bit and the screen was changed for this one. Now this is a full screen and hard drive unit that actually contains all the maps which are preloaded up via a USB. So it's self-contained and requires no drive. But it's still connected on the fibre optic mouse bus of the infotainment system and it's still connected to an integrated head unit which is exactly the same as all previous years and again in this case it's mounted on the top of a CD changer mechanism with a slot that's hidden behind a plastic panel. Now it occurred to me that since the integrated head unit has remained the same in throughout all of the years and all of the variations and since the fibre optic bus is its own, own entity it should theoretically be possible to connect the screen of the later 2010 onto the infotainment head unit of the, the earlier Discovery 3. And that's exactly what we've done here. Here we have the head unit, 6 disc changer, integrated head unit sitting on the top, fibre optic bus coming out of it, we have it connected to a phone module and also linked in to the, uh, the screen unit from a 2010 unit which has got all the usual features, navigation, settings, audio, video, everything contained as it, as it is. All of the setup of this is taken from the instrument pack which I've got connected at the rear of the unit. Now you probably notice that on this screen what's missing is the 4x4 info. That's actually the reason why I have the phone module connected because we discovered that there is actually the possibility to establish a data connection with the phone module and exploit that by making an application that uses Bluetooth connection. And I have here my Android phone and on my Android phone I have a Bluetooth application that we've created. It establishes a connection with the vehicle, gets the VIN and then presents a list of functions. In this case all I want is the enable 4x4, yes, starts off, the screen will respond It will reset, the display goes out on the head unit, turn it back on, the phone confirms that the change has actually been made and sure enough on the screen there we have our 4x4 info.